Let's take a look at addition and subtraction of fractions. Now, when we add two things together, what we are looking for is how much we have all together, everything considered. And in order to figure out how much we have all together, it's very important that we are adding the same type of thing. So we see this very commonly in algebra. For example, if you have x plus x, you can add them because you can say I have one x and another x, altogether I have two x. But if there are different things such as x plus y, I can't say how much I have altogether because they're not the same kind of item. And it's exactly the same when you add and subtract fractions. Therefore, you can add them, you need to make sure that you're talking about the same kind of fraction in each case. So if we wanted to add 3 eighths and 7 twelfths. Right, our first job is to make sure that we get the denominators to be the same. And that denominator that is the same for both is referred to as the lowest common multiple of both of the original denominators. So if we look at the multiples of 8, in other words the 8 times table, 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 4 is 32, that should be enough. And if we look at the 12 times table, 12 times 1 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, 12 times 3 is 36, etc, etc. The lowest multiple that is common to both 8 and 12 is going to be 24. So that is going to be the common denominator that you choose for 8 and 12. We needed to multiply 8 by 3 to give us 24, so we do the same to the numerator. 3 times 3 is 9. We need to multiply 12 times 2 to get 24, so we multiply 7 times 2. That gives us 14. 9 add 14 is 23 over 24. Let's have a look at some algebraic examples. Number 1 x over y minus 3 over z. So now when we are dealing with algebraic numbers, because we don't know the specific value of y and the specific value of z, the lowest common multiple will actually just be the product of the two denominators that you've got originally. So y times z is yz. You need it to times y by z to give you yz. So you multiply x by z, that gives you xz. And you need to multiply z by y, so you multiply the negative 3 by y, which gives you negative 3y. There are no like terms in the numerator, so that is as simplified as you can do that one. Alright, number 2. Same principle applies, except now our denominators are binomials. So exactly the same thing, it's a binomial and a binomial, so our lowest common denominator will be the whole of x plus 1 and the times by the whole of x plus 2. We need to times x plus 1 by x plus 2, so we multiply 3 by x plus 2. And we need to multiply x plus 2 by x plus 1, so we need to do the same in the numerator. We can now simplify that numerator by doing the distributive law in both cases. So 3 times x is 3x, 3 times 2 is positive 6, positive x times x is positive x squared, and positive x times positive 1 is positive x. I'm not going to multiply out in the denominator. And then if we just add the like terms and write it in descending powers of x, x squared 3x plus x is positive 4x and add 6. And that will all be over x plus 1 and x plus 2. Always remember to check whether your numerator can factorize once you've finished adding because it might be possible to simplify. But if we look here, the factors of 6 are 6 and 1 and 2 and 3 and neither of those combine to give us positive 4. So that is going to be as simplified as that fraction gets. Alright, number 3. We need to be very careful before we choose our lowest common multiple to make sure that we can see what each of our denominators is made up of. So we first need to factorize each of the denominators before we can choose our lowest common multiple. So 4x squared minus 9 is the difference of two squares. It will factor into 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 is a trinomial. We're looking for factors of 2 and factors of 12 that our outers and our inners will give us positive 5 in the middle. And those factors are 2x minus 3 and x plus 4. We can now choose our lowest common denominator. We need to have a 2x plus 3. 
we need to have a 2x minus 3. We've already got this 2x minus 3 here, so we don't need a second one. That's why it was important to factorize first, because we can see we have the same factor in both of our denominators, and x plus 4. We now multiply the numerators by whatever we had to multiply the denominator by. So here, the missing factor was x plus 4, so that's what we would multiply by. And here, the missing factor was 2x plus 3. If we now multiply out, I'm just going to do it above there, that will give us x plus 4 minus 4 times 2x is 8x minus 12. And then if we add the like terms, x minus 8x is negative 7x. And positive 4 subtract 12 is negative 8. And that will be all over 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3, and x plus 4. Okay, there are some examples for you to try in your homework book, so please pause the video and try these. Right, number one, our lowest common denominator. These are both prime denominators, so we don't need to factorize them first. So our LCD will be x plus 3 multiplied by 2x plus 1. We need to multiply this denominator by 2x plus 1, so we do the same in the numerator. And we need to multiply this denominator by x plus 3. If we simplify, 2 times 2x is 4x, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 6x squared, minus 18x, all over x plus 3, 2x plus 1. That gives us negative 6x squared, 4x minus 18x is negative um, 12x, sorry, negative 14x, and add 2 all over x plus 3 times 2x plus 1. Okay, and in the numerator, if we factorized it, we can just see what will happen if we get anything common. So if we take out a um, negative 2, which is the common factor, we have x squared minus 7x, uh, sorry, plus 7x minus 1, and that trinomial doesn't factorize, which means that this cannot simplify any further. That will be our final answer. Okay, number two, we first, this denominator here is not prime. There are factors of 20 that will combine to give us negative 1 in the middle. So we need to factorize that into two binomials. The factors of 20 that give us negative 1 are negative 5 and positive 4. That um, denominator of the second fraction is already prime, so we don't need to factorize it. So our LCD will be n minus 5 times n plus 4. We don't need a second n plus 4 because it's already represented in our lowest common denominator. So we don't have to multiply this fraction by anything. It's already the denominator from this fraction is the same as the LCD. So we just leave it as n minus 4, but the 2n will have to be multiplied by n minus 5. If we simplify, 2n squared minus 10n over n minus 5 n plus 4. And if we tidy up there, we have 2n squared minus 9n minus 4 all over n minus 5 n plus 4. 2n squared minus 9n minus 4 does not factorize, so that won't simplify any further. So there's our final answer.